What you do makes a difference and you need to decide what kind of difference you want to make. Hello everybody, I'm your host Seema Choria and I welcome you all to another insightful session on great principles. Joining me in conversation is my steadfast educator of the day, Ms. Abhilasha Singh, Principal Shining Star International School, Abu Dhabi, UAE. Welcome to Great Principles, ma'am. We are really honored to have you with us. Thank you so much, Seema. Uh, honor is all mine. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity uh, to be invited on your platform and also to through this platform to be talking to the global educator uh, education fraternity. So it's my pleasure and it's my proud privilege to be here. Thank you so much, ma'am. So we are very excited to know about your journey. So let us start where it all began. So what I know about you was that, you know, once upon a time, being a teacher was not a dream vocation for you. Yet, you know, some things are meant to be and how this is how destiny is. And you are today destined. And look at you today. You are heading an institute already. So, you know, take us back to those days, how it all started and what keeps you going here. So, uh, Seema, thank you so much for that question. Um, I really, I, I didn't want to work. It's not that I didn't want to become a teacher. I didn't want to work. I had a working mother. And I remember I'm the elder one in the family. Uh, coming back from school, I had to get my little sister with me. My mother used to pack a lunchbox for us. And I remember one afternoon when I opened the lunchbox, uh, the, the, the chapatis had sweat on it. I mean, you know how the steam then settles on it. And I wanted my mom home. Uh, when I got back uh, to receive us and to give us warm food, that sort of stayed with me throughout my uh, school life, college life. And I really didn't want to work. But then uh, being married to a, uh, to a soldier, uh, being an army wife, uh, I realized that teaching is one of the best professions to suit because it doesn't, it doesn't disturb your family life. So then I, with a lot of trepidation, I prepared my CV. And I went dropping in, in, uh, in the schools in the region. I, I, we were posted at Meerut at that time. And uh, the that very day, I mean, I, I got uh, selected at two schools. I had to make a choice. And uh, that's it. So the first day at school, the first day in the class, and I just fell in love with teaching. I didn't want to do anything else after that. It's like a calling. It was actually like a calling. And uh, there's been no looking back. And here I am leading a school now. <laughs> You know, ma'am, uh, hearing you, I'm a working mom and I can't tell you that how every working mom have this guilt that is she doing enough for her kids? I don't know. I mean, today I'm feeling that a little more hearing the other side, how a child feels from within that I want my mom to be here when I need her at every time. Let's see. I mean, this is the things work out for me. But, uh, you know, I always tell my daughter that being a mother doesn't stop you from being who you are so continue what you like to do and uh, i was like you know maybe i'm setting this example for her that uh, by becoming a mother life doesn't stop for her it's not focused just for her kids she can pursue her career too but i think till the time i don't know i mean today i'm hearing a different perspective so it's kind of making me feel from within am i doing justice to my children or not <laughs> i don't know no, it's ironical you know see it's ironical because uh, i i brought up my daughter uh, to respect um, my me time and also to understand mm -hmm. that we like she also I have a university going daughter now I'm a child now okay. and so all yeah. those years I mean I made her believe I, I have I brought her up with that kind of uh, re values that this is the generation which is going to be working uh, moms they will be working ladies so, you know, this is how you make a work-life balance. And while I say this, that I, I used to miss my mom when I got home. But then I also have to thank my mother uh, for what all she did for us uh, to get us good education. And where, where we are today is her contribution that she put herself at discomfort so that we could get the best that uh, we, 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 she thought we deserved. And every mother thinks that, that the children deserve. So hats off to her. And at the same time that, you know, it, it's sort of, it, it's a value that you learn and you learn to respect yeah. as well. And all, all girls have to learn that they, they, and all men have to learn that men also have to know that, uh, the, it, it is ladies are not just women are not just to be found in the back uh, to keep the hearth and the home warm. They are going to be working generation, working shoulder to shoulder with them and they have to be respected. And when they get back home, the husbands have to work and have to share the, the, the burden at home. This Absolutely, ma'am. 
yeah so to all the students out there to all the you know the youth out there understand that this this, this generation will be like that now you have both have to support each other share the load and you very rightly said that you know the generation needs to understand that a woman needs to be independent also she can make her own choices she is not the one who is always going to be at home i think ma'am there is one other angle to it even the children learn to respect the quality time that the mother spend because she is not available 24 by 7 and even mother, we are very so cautious because when i am at home those 4 hours focused i am with them my mind is not anywhere else because i need that focus so i think that is a plus side of uh, the working mothers too yeah, yeah. you know yeah because when you are at home you know acha theek hai baad mein bhi kar lenge how does it matter we are at home only so there are both the sides and i think you very rightly said every mother would be a working mother soon so i and that is the reason that we are also making our girls educate and we are making them qualified in all the skills no now skills are not defined by gender you know everyone absolutely. can take up everything absolutely yeah. so so tell me ma'am how do you educate the girls in your school i mean do you have a different perspective for them i mean what kind of independence or what kind of self reliance thing you are teaching them so uh, firstly <laughs> by nature you know i'm very very partial to girls and uh, having <laughs> taught in areas uh, in the country back home uh, where i mean i've taught taught from very high well, very privileged schools to uh, schools in the village and now coming to uae uh, when i came to uae i, I was in new indian model school as a head of section girls and uh, there i realized that how much uh, how, i mean how much they needed empowerment and how much they needed somebody to believe in them and to and, and to give them confidence uh, and and to help them uh, step have the confidence to step out of the school boundaries because i'll take a little time over here because this is so close to my heart the work that that has happened with the girls is so close to my heart that uh, when i uh, when i joined the school at that time the and because the school has islamic ethos so the uh, it is not islamic school but it is islamic tradition school so the values are very deeply ingrained uh, and come from the teachings of the holy quran so uh, there were the grey beards in the school who uh, who who believed that the girls uh, should not step out out of the school for any inter school competition so whatever was there was in the school intra school or uh, we have five uh, schools uh, as a corporate group so it was inter in intra corporate group competitions and that to only girls like you know so there were places where if there was a, it was a coed competition where there would be presence of boys the girls were not sent to such places so that was for me it was it was quite an eye, eye opener because as, because it was it is something that these the, the girls especially and both girls and boys when they step uh, when when they uh, graduate from school the workplace that they would be joining would would not have demarcations of only women section and only girl section there would be colleagues over there and the gender uh, you know bias over there uh, i mean i know that about the glass ceiling and all that but as a as a sort of a workspace environment both the genders are have equal competition and the one who has who is skilled at it and who is confident enough to sort of uh, you know stand up for himself herself dig in their heels and say no to no and not take any kind of other indignation there the coed interaction is important and uh, so the first thing that i did was i sent uh, i i myself took the responsibility of uh, first time in the history of 35 years our school is going to complete 40 years now 35 years of school history the first time the girls was going out of the school as a team for for a coed i mean a competition where there would be other gender as well and this is the model how we started model un in the school so i took the girls and uh, the first competition was bbcm un and then that uh, the, the later in the months uh, the team uh, where the girls had only gone to local parks for picnic i went i sent a team to nasa so that exposure and then girls and uh, bulbuls uh, guides and scouts uh, in in uh, trivandrum so this kind of uh in exposure to stepping out of school and seeing what's out of the school what's around what's there in the world you know because i believe traveling is is the best educator and we learn a lot when we travel so and my focus also is that the children should get as much experience in local uh, excursions uh, regional competitions as well as international so the school model motto 
is from the school MUN to the real UN. And in that journey, in that uh, span of four years, the girls actually were able to go to the UN headquarter NYC. And out of that, uh, the, the team of uh, six that I took, five that traveled with me, uh, two uh, were vice presidents of their, of their committees. And one of them uh, was selected uh, to represent her committee uh, to address the plenary in the general assembly. And it is she was just a 13 year old uh, girl at that time. So from that same marble podium, which has seen the world leaders standing and addressing the GA, UNGA, there my girl was there. And, you know, that has become part of school history. So these are these kind of opportunities that you have created. One has created for the uh, students in the school. And at that time, especially for the girls. And then when I took over as a vice principal, it went for the boys as well. Boys were in the afternoon session. And they would hardly get any opportunity because of, you know, they, they were not there in the school and all the competitions are mostly in the morning session. So then again, creating those opportunities. And now that I'm principal of Shining Star International School, same is happening over here as well. And the entire focus is on building student agency. And I'm a, I'm a big fan of student agency. And I know that their empowerment means that uh, they will be capable of living independent lives in the future. Wow, commendable. I mean, you know, taking a step to do something and breaking the stereotypes, especially the gender stereotypes in closely tight compartmentalized kind of atmosphere is very tough. Seema, seriously, I had to literally knock on the doors, push open doors, put my foot into the door. I mean, I have done all that was required for my girls. And uh, I mean, this is something out of the context at the moment. But when I left the school, I mean, you those are the moments like you know which you which become part of your life that i can't even tell you how it was that the whole school was out and the buses were delayed because the children didn't want to leave me those those moments are what i, I have sort of earned that you know so i know that the kind of hard work that has gone and how well respected and how well rewarded it was yeah absolutely it is said now ma'am that uh, every time you just keep complaining about there should be a change but when you try to bring in a change, then you have to be ready for all the consequences also. And forgetting all the consequences, you just stepped in and you just, you know, tried your best and see the results today. So it's such wonderful step by an educator today. And we are very glad that we were able to bring out this story from you and we could share it to the others so that they can inspire to bring about a change. And when this will happen, then only the global economy will flourish. So it was really wonderful to hear you. Moving ahead to my next question, ma'am. So we were talking about making the children independent. So, I mean, uh, it was not only about the girls. What other things apart from, you know, participating at different forums we can do at school level to make our children more independent? You know, I see these days, especially in our country, India, what I see that the 12th standard is standing in the queue and the parent is filling the form. I mean, what's the need? Why can't the child do it on his own? We too much spoon feed as parents also. So how can we address these issues? So, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, there's a famous uh, 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 quote that I'm reminded of, and this is also was the motto of one of the schools that I worked in. Uh, the Battle of Waterloo was won on, on the playing fields of Eton. And there is uh, a, a lot of depth in that saying because this is about uh, schools being those, those, uh, that, that space and those, place, and those places where uh, we ensure that we have opportunities for the students uh, to enhance their skills and to learn leadership and to exercise leadership and also to test their own potential. So, you know, I, I'm sort of digressing from the main question how, but I'm leading to uh, leading to that, uh, to, to, to those, those opportunities where uh, we know that through this, the children have independent thinking. So unless and until the parents don't open up their idea of what school education is, and not just limited to board results and the annual exam results where which are those just numbers on papers and actually mean nothing unless and until you know that the child can actually uh, vouch for those or, or or stand up for those numbers that are there on uh, the on the report card so you know those kind of things so in the school itself like i love student led projects so rather than a top down approach we need to have a bottoms up approach where from the grassroots level the ideas are coming in so design thinking uh, is one such uh, a, a, a strategy in the schools that works very well and you need to get the children to actually give ideas to a ideate on 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 so it's a human centered uh, design process thinking process 
and also like even from the cbsc point of view now with this new assessment pattern and all they also have realized that they require a generation of thinking learners and not just rote learners you know so engaging the children in those conversations and getting them to do the work in the school rather than we telling them and we doing it for them so empowering the student uh, council uh, first and foremost so that's the leadership and then having that many activities in the school where the children enhance their skills and learn leadership and be independent and similarly also is uh, looking at academics in the class so that as well i i i hate it when i see a teacher dictating answers or writing on the blackboard and the children just writing it down in the notebook and mugging it up so that's that's we have to we have we have to walk away from that because till the time we don't let the children work for themselves we cannot hope to have thinking generation and we cannot hope to have independent learners so there the parents also have to be educated about how to let the children do their work themselves uh, indian parents we know we pamper our kids a lot we really we we sort of smother them and we are overbearing and we really don't give space to our kids to expand their wings that that has to so has to stop has to change so you know so both it is like a that 360 degree circle in which the child is at the center of that circle and the child has space as in the in the in the radius to to expand uh, and take flight and and you know strengthen their wings so like that's i'm a philosophical rendition of what what needs to be done but then you get the idea what i'm talking about absolutely ma'am you know so i'm very pleased that kind of changes the cbsc and nep now everyone is talking about in bringing everyone is focusing on having the generation of thinkers so this is a brilliant change that is coming in education domain so similarly you very rightly said that our parents need to also change their approach they also need to be educated that you know just let the children bloom don't just you know just nurture them don't just force them you know for anything like and just I don't remember, take up all their work like you said yeah like you said about sorry for interjecting in between like you said about filling forms no i also i remember that uh, my parents uh, uh, my father told me to go i i filled all my after my grade 12 i filled all my forms yeah. myself me and my friend used to go we used to stand in the post office line to get the demand draft made and all like you know so that kind of thing we need to let the children do it themselves i know the parents accompany the kids everywhere i mean they don't let them do things themselves one of the activities that we've started in our school is also cv writing teaching the children how to write their cvs because i know that as as a, a principal when we recruit teachers and we see the cvs we know that some of them don't even know what they have written in it because they've gone to somebody else or they've from the software they've got things uh, done you know so those kind of yeah. literally life skills that the children need to learn certainly and i cannot agree less you know because when you search google about the maximum downloaded templates is cv template of word doc so that's so true you know i can completely relate and majorly you know very rightly said that life skills need to be taught to children so you know both part need to have a partnership parents and the educators the school when we all work together to this common goal then only we can see the drastic difference because it's not only school's responsibility to train the children for life it the onus is lies on the parent also we just cannot just rely on the school to teach everything i mean half of the time the child is at the home also right so hoping that uh, our parents take up this wonderful step and ensure that they are getting given the space and letting the child fall let them do mistakes because mistakes teaches a lot failure is a step towards success parents so please you know just live by this so moving ahead to my next question ma'am you know we uh, educators uh, they work day and night and there is so much of thing that they do for our children shape their lives for the nation and uh, there are a lot of awards and recognition which uh, you know accolade accolades are there which gives recognition to the educators for the brilliant work they are doing but apart from that what do you think will add value and sparkle to an educator's life uh I, i would i would start from here and this is something that i tell my teachers as well um uh, management can only give you a salary the real rewards are given by your students they are the ones who and 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 you have to let your work speak through your students you know rather than you uh, sort of blowing your own trumpet it's always it's always best to work with your kids and your kids then reflect your work and there when they win prizes you, they know that it is through you it is your work so having that having said that putting putting that aside now um 
the real recognition you know any teacher uh, like I, i've been a teacher myself for so many years uh, any teacher loves recognition uh, and celebration of her efforts uh, by the senior leadership team so that recognition of her work that itself is a big reward for her so uh, praising your teachers uh, in the assembly uh, in the meetings recognizing being aware of who's done what and recognizing that effort and and then celebrating it uh, in in the school uh, events that uh, that boosts a teacher's morale uh, to a, to a big uh, scale and uh, then uh, of course there are uh, nominations from the school side from the from the leadership side if there's something opening so the school leaders have to be aware of that and never hesitate to recommend your teachers for uh, these uh, uh, these opportunities i mean that that is the onus lies on the school leader uh, to never stop the teachers growth and to lead them towards it like i have uh, in my school and my teachers in the last two years have won a lot of a uh, lot of awards and all that has been possible because you know you have to uh, uh, give them those uh, free that that free space and not curb their uh, wings and opportunities that no you can't apply no go ahead apply i want my teachers to apply for the global global uh, teachers uh, prize which uh, gems and which the which the worky foundation uh, organizes why not i mean you all deserve it try apply so that way uh, the teachers recognition the efforts of the teachers have to be uh, have to be recognized and you need to lead them to win those uh, to apply and nominate themselves you also give reference uh, to for your teachers and the world is a big play field uh, and there's space for everyone and also then empower them to get gain qualifications empower the teachers to uh, to to become a sort of uh, you know lead them where they become ambassadors of various uh, organizations or events like i've got a, we are a wakelet school so i've got wakelet community ambassadors in school i've got wakelet ambassadors in school i've got wakelet students ambassador in school near pod uh, leaped and teach better uh, i've got teach sdg ambassadors in school i've got a uh, climate action project ambassadors in school then we are a t4 uh, ambassador a country ambassadors in school so you know they, this way that empowerment you see the school flourishing uh, because the teacher is flourished absolutely ma'am and ultimately you know what is the goal of leadership to prepare more leaders so we all Absolutely. need to focus on giving that growth to our team you know and once that is established we all can see the result the teacher attrition ratio would be you know considerably low when you give them that opportunities and growth so this is a leadership lesson that we learned today that you know if you want to grow then grow with your team let your team also grow and bloom along with you let them you know your responsibility is to make more leaders in turn so wonderful uh, you know ideas shared by ma'am and how you can empower your teachers to perform better and you know motivate them keep on uh, recognizing their efforts so these small things they go a big way and ultimately the entire school fraternity gets benefit of it so moving ahead to the very interesting segment of the show which is called rapid fire round so ma'am here you have to answer me in one word or a sentence would do okay so here goes my first question what art forms fascinates you uh, uh sorry <laughs> watercolors watercolors all right are you a gardening enthusiast absolutely absolutely i've got lovely tomatoes and uh, green onions growing in my garden at the moment brinjals wow. and uh, a lot of thyme and uh, a lot of basil oh that's too so how do you take care of your plants do you find a pro um, uh, ample time for it i have to steal time actually so i do it on more on weekends and it's a lot of peace i mean it's your me time and it's a meditation so one one must because the kind of stressful environment we are in so it's it's like really really necessary that we do it i i really certainly. love it but just have to steal time yeah certainly and to all my dear parents you know there is one beautiful thing about having a plant or a pet it automatically teaches your child to be caring and compassionate so you need not focus on that just have a pet or one small plant for your child which he waters and see growing so moving ahead to my next question uh name your signature dish relished by family and friends i suppose you lasagna. love cooking so lasagna, lasagna. all right <laughs> wonderful tiramisu tell us about tiramisu oh that is a little tricky to make i guess so you cook that too i perfected the art 
Oh, 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 wow, wow. Oh, I'm just failing in it. I just can't master it. And I end up going to the restaurant and eating it. So I, it's one of my favorites and I love it. So moving ahead to my next question. Tell us about an incident that always brings smile on your face. A lot many, lot many. But then winning the International Best Delegation Award at the uh, London MUN, uh, that was my first international award. So that always brings fond memories because as a group, we bonded so well. And then, of course, uh, Krishna Satish uh, being selected to address the GA plenary, uh, that has been the sort of the, the a big plume on my hat, <laughs> plume of feathers on my hat. So, yeah, and there are many more as well, many more as well. Congratulations for achieving that and many more, I'm sure, to come. And we always wish that there are more incidents adding to this beautiful diary of smiles and it keeps on bringing a and lovely I, smile. And, and see if, if I can also uh, call out a personal achievement. And that was running my first uh, full marathon, uh, Ad North Marathon 2018. So that mm -hmm. again, uh, uh, I mean, I consider it a big achievement because I ran it at the age of 46. Oh, wonderful. Great. You know, so ma'am, you are an inspiration for all the uh, women in 40s that there is always a start for everything. So we, you are never old. I mean, you can just pursue anything if you have uh, wished for. So moving ahead to my last question in this segment, name that educationist whom you look upon for your advice, inspiration and support. Hands down, Captain AJ Singh. He's the headmaster, he's the CEO and director of Pine Grove School. And if I'm a teacher and a leader today, it's all because of him. It's, it's under his mentorship that we've all grown. And anyone, any person who's worked in Pine Grove uh, loves Captain Aja Singh and Mrs. Samiksha, uh, his uh, wife, and he's, she's also administrator of the school. We all have learned so much, so much. So Captain Aja Singh, uh, he is much respected. And uh, I, I go, I'll go to him for, for, for anything and everything if I'm stuck anywhere. Yeah, wonderful. You know, it's always uh, great to have a mentor around. You know, things are so sorted when you have someone always there. So uh, we have come to the end of this section. Now we reach to the last question of the show, which is called the viewer's choice question. So my viewers wants to know what all is about the sustainable development goals and how, what are the outcomes of this, what it means. We are hearing these words constantly, but we would like to understand how can this be inculcated from the very beginning in our children also. Uh, thank you so much, Seema. That's, that question is a big part of my heart and a big part of my work as well. So first and foremost, I'll start from here. Agenda 2030 is a collective responsibility. Each one of us has to contribute uh, to ensure that the 17 Sustainable Development Goals become uh, a reality. We are able to achieve them by 2030. Well, it looks hard, but this is a decade of action. Two years have already gone and uh, we only have uh, about... Uh, eight years left and there's a lot of work that needs to be put in place and needs to be initiated completed by 2030 and in this it is not just the government's responsibility but at grassroots level each and every individual has to contribute to ensure that this big plan uh, this big uh, 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 ambitious achieve um, uh, goal uh, becomes a reality so there are 17 sustainable 17 goals 169 targets uh, it is it is a is a big task but then it has to be uh, it needs to be done uh, it needs to be uh, taken up by each and every individual so at school level which is the grassroots level of the society uh, we we as leaders need to ensure that we are aware and then uh, uh, our commitment towards education for sustainable development has to be complete and, and you know a sincere commitment. So embedding the embedding the ESD into the curriculum that is the first start, and then uh, making your school community aware of the SDGs and and then starting actions on it on on the to actions to take for uh, towards agenda 2030. So I I, I have. Uh, I love the three A's of uh, SDGs, and uh, this is advocacy, activism, and taking action. You know, so now, it, now is the. I mean, there is. You haven't started. Now is the time to start. Uh, I mean, there's never, there's never uh, a, a day uh, to be lost. Also, we all must understand, and I'm sure we are already aware that we don't have a planet B. We only have Earth, and this is our home, and this is the only place that we have. Uh, that we need to take care of and we need to sustain so in that manner you know each and every uh, each and every action counts 
now uh, also uh, seema uh, the awareness has to be that like uh, the the privileged lot so in uae like we have we have a, I, i call it we have a problem of plenty we have too many choices that children are spoiled because mm-hmm. there's this there's the spoiled for choices we ourselves as well for so many things so now we become part of the haves and we must must contribute in any way that we can to ensure that the have nots of the world are taken care of so you know so goal number 1 and goal number 2 over here come into focus and then of course goal number 4 where goal number 4.7 uh it, it becomes very important uh, to understand and where it is no, nobody to be left behind so each and every individual from every corner of the world with whatever ability the person has has to get quality education because education is at the center of so many things and when a person is educated it, it is awareness it is knowledge it leads to employment employment leads to eradication of poverty and you know so eradication of poverty will also ensure that there is good health uh, amongst the community so that that cycle continues and the five p's for the planet uh, the uh, like like we have the five p's of uh, sustainability which is planet people prosperity peace so in that manner uh, the sdgs are each and everybody's responsibility and especially like it's at school level they have to be embedded in the curriculum so there are so many activities that you can do and it's already happening there are there are uh, schools which are doing amazing work uh, towards sdgs and here are some of the uh, key uh, com- uh, key projects that schools can uh, take part in if you are already not part of the climate action project and the goals project which is uh, initiated by uh, take action global which is co-founded by dr jennifer williams and uh, kun timmers and uh, then uh, i'm also a connected uh, international uh, advocate and ambassador so connected international is a solidarity network and it is a it is a network of uh, social media influencers so you know so the in, so it is not just about taking action on ground you can also become a social media influencer to spread awareness about sdgs so there's so much of work that that needs to be done and then also must contribute uh, toward to the needy to the helpful so my school teachers are uh, they volunteer to teach at project kakuma and uh, this is the refugee camp in kenya and there are about 10 more than 10000 well uh, there are millions of refugees over there but there are about 10000 10000 students who are getting education in project kakuma so that is again a big part of our heart and our work in the school and uh, we are connected with that so there are just a few examples of how Uh, you can connect with sdgs how you can initiate these projects in the school paper recycling uh, garden vegetable composting uh, then uh, say no to plastic and also the awareness about fossil fuels and you know where you you have you can walk uh, where you t- the distance that you can rather than taking a car so reducing uh, your carbon footprint all these are important conversations to have it in the school with your students absolutely you know mother nature has its own way of uh, striking out a balance if we don't do it so you very rightly said it's not the work of the government rather it's a collective responsibility of all the people all the children of mother nature so we all need to work collectively to ensure that our planet is safe and you know with meta was coming it is millions of money spending in virtual world so you know we all need to ensure that we need to focus on the real world more apps at the human connection i mean this will always stay the mixing of yeah. the aura uh, your your personal space you, you know that interaction within your physical space all these are you cannot do without it i mean and they are much required because otherwise man would become a machine and we are slowly becoming that because we are too much into our devices and with this metaverse thing coming i mean it's scary you know what all are we going to do and how much are we going to like say in saudi arabia they are creating this uh, 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 ecosystem uh, in the desert uh, uh, the where, where water and you know in the desert they are going to create i'm sorry i'm forgetting the name of that uh, uh, mm-hmm. the, the place that they are creating is a residential colony kind of a thing but then Uh, how much like you know you, uh, technology can interfere with nature the, the cloud mm-hmm. seeding can happen but then the effect of cloud seeding at that place becomes big brings rain but then at other place i'm sure there's some negative effect uh, for for other uh, any any other ecosystem or environment 
so i mean this kind of thing is scary very scary so it we have to be grounded scary. and we have to keep our earth uh, keep our feet firmly planted on terra firma and see that our mother earth stays healthy and uh, like like the famous Amer- uh, native american saying that we don't inherit our earth from our ancestors we borrow it from our future generation and we have the responsibility of passing it on the better the way we got so we need to focus on giving the earth back much better than we received to our generation so you know this has to be the goal and what a wonderful conversation it was you know there were so much learnings about so many topics we touched about it spoke about girl education we talked about in independent education we spoke about the planet earth and so much of learning was there so many takeaways were there we learned about leadership also so in a short while ma'am there was so much that we learned today so i don't i don't know whether this short time is enough because there is so much to understand from you but you know today you taught me one thing that you know we all need to define the purpose of the life and my interpretation of the entire conversation is that set the purpose of your life and go ahead and finally try your best to fulfill it so this should be the goal of everyone's life so thank you for teaching thank me you. these things today thank you so much thank for your you. time with us ma'am thank you see was a lovely conversation and i i think the time just passed and i didn't even come to know that it's a it's an hour a conversation gone <laughs> yeah so that that's a beauty you know when we are speaking with our heart we do just don't know where the time went and as you said you know we cannot just be we need to connect with each other we need to understand each other and this kind of knowledge sharing is required yeah. so and thank you once again especially with our students we we need to yeah. work with our students yeah. yeah thank you so much seema thanks awesome. thanks so much for having me i really enjoyed the conversation with you and i look forward to uh, our our continued association Same here, ma'am. We'll love to have you in all our upcoming sessions soon, ma'am. Thank you so much for your time once again. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye.